Momentum. 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 What is momentum? You may have heard the word used before. Uh, maybe talking about sports or something like that. That team really has the momentum. They're really, you know, they're they're winning this game. Uh, and what that really means, if they have a streak in the game, they have the momentum. And what it really means, I think, the way that you use it in common terminology is that that team is really moving and they're hard to stop. And it, it's kind of like that is actually what our physics definition of momentum is. So we're going to talk about the definition that we're going to use for momentum. And the simple definition is that momentum is mass in motion or inertia in motion. But a more complete definition uh, that we're going to use in our physics class, and this is actually an equation definition, is that the momentum is the mass times the velocity. Or you can see here, momentum, which we use the symbol P for momentum. That's a lowercase p, not to be confused with capital P for power, and it's a vector. Momentum is equal to mass times the velocity. And so it's the mass of the object times the velocity. And you'll see it's just like velocity, momentum is a vector. And the momentum vector is going to point the same direction as the velocity vector. Uh, we actually use a, ca a lowercase p here because it kind of comes from the word impetus, which has a p in there, or the Latin word uh, pedera, which means sort of like a force, a pull or a push. Uh, but it, it doesn't really mean that it's p is what we use here. Another reason is just because we've already used m, it'd be confusing if we put in another n. So before we move on, let's take a look at this equation and talk about the units that we would have for momentum. If we rewrite this equation with the units for mass and velocity. Let's take a look at what we get. We get that mass is in kilograms, velocity is in meters per second, so the unit for momentum should be kilograms times meters per second, or kilogram meters per second. There we go. In our previous units, we sort of put these together. We've seen a new thing, we call it some new fancy name. Uh, but there's no short and fancy name for momentum. We just call it kilogram meters per second. Uh, you're just going to have to write it every time. Sorry. So let's take a quick check at a problem for this. We're going to calculate the momentum. So let's say that we've got a 40 kilogram freshman student who's moving southward at 2 meters per second. So we've got this situation. This is the top view that's top of the head with some arms. Okay, so they're walking this way, walking south, two meters per second. To figure it out, we just plug it in. So we've got the momentum vector is going to be equal to the mass times the velocity. Since it's a vector, we have to include the direction. And so what we get here is 80 kilogram meters per second Set. And for basic momentum calculations, it's really that easy. We're just putting it together, multiplying the mass times the velocity. If instead you were trying to find the velocity, you knew the momentum and the mass, it would be the same sort of thing. You just have to divide instead of multiply. One last thing about this, about momentum, is there's a very common misconception that I want to cut off right now and make sure that you don't think this way. And so you'll look at this equation for momentum, and it's got mass and velocity inside of it. You know, we already had an equation that had mass and velocity inside of it last unit, and that was kinetic energy. Kinetic energy was one half mv squared, and kinetic energy is not the momentum. They are very different things, even though they both have an m, and they both have the v in the equation. So try not to get them confused. One big distinction is kinetic energy is a scalar. It doesn't have a direction. Momentum does have a direction. So we add momentums together, you're going to have to make sure that we're adding them up vector style, like we were doing back with forces, all of that stuff. You've got to think when you add in opposite directions, they add oppositely, or you subtract them. Uh, 
it might be kind of, seem kind of silly that we've got two different numbers that have to do with the mass and the velocity of the object, but I think you'll see as we keep going in this unit that there's some really important reasons as to why. Uh, momentum is super useful. All right, so there's one more thing I wanted to say about momentum, uh, specifically some of its uses. Momentum is used when two objects interact with one another. This is when we would use momentum instead of anything else. Previously, we've only talked about like one thing moving, but if we got two objects hitting each other, we would call it a collision, two objects running into one another. Maybe we've got these two objects here, they would hit and that would be a collision. And so in that sort of example, trying to do all the calculations using kinematics or energy or forces gets really tricky, but using momentum, things get pretty easy. And so that's why we use it. Another way we can talk about momentum, another sort of definition that you could use would be that it's the collision oomph, how much oomph something's got. So, you know, basically it's kind of like how much it would hurt you if you got hit by it, or uh, in the case of two objects, which one is going to win in the collision? So if they're both moving towards each other, you might think the bigger object would win. You might think the faster object would win. And so what actually is the case is the one with more momentum wins the collision. So if the red ball was had a smaller mass but much higher speed, it might have a bigger momentum than this. So when they came in together and collided, they would stick together and move in this direction, or they would bounce off and they would wind up moving generally in this direction. Whereas if the yellow ball has a bigger mass and they both have the same velocity, then maybe it would be coming in like this, they would collide and they would go off in that direction. They'd be coming together and they'd go off in that direction. And maybe if they both had exactly the same momentum, they would come together and just stop. They would hit each other and that momentum would cancel out and they would stop right there in the middle. Or, you know, maybe they would both bounce off in opposite directions. But if, if they go together in one direction, that means that the one that was moving in that direction in the first place had more momentum. You're going to need to know that tonight. Moving on. On for momentum, we're going to talk about one more topic today. For this one, we're actually talking about a new idea. It's called impulse. And when we think about momentum, we're talking about this mass times velocity. That was our equation for momentum. And in order to change the momentum for an object, you kind of have to change its velocity. It's kind of hard to, most objects don't change their mass. So, I mean, you could change the mass to change the momentum, but usually we're changing the velocity. In order to change the velocity, we need an acceleration. In order for an acceleration, we need a force. So to change momentum, we probably need a force. And the other thing is you can't just apply a force for an instant. You've got to apply a force for a little while. And the longer you apply the force, you think the more of an effect it can have. And so that's this idea of impulse. We've got a force acting for an amount of time. So let's write down the definition of impulse. Here we have our definition written out in words as well as using symbols. For impulse, we actually use a capital J. I know, we maybe should have just used a capital I, but it's been around for a while. Sometimes I call it gym pulse, just to remember. So we've got that the gym pulse is equal to the force times the time. And here we write force, capital F, and for time, we write delta T as some interval of time. It's not just what time it is when you push it, it's how long you are pushing it for. So that's why I put the delta in there. Uh, impulse is actually also a vector. So I should have on here those arrows. And we get the force times the time. That tells us our impulse. Let's look at the units on this real quick before we get any further. We get newtons times seconds, which is newton seconds. Or if you think about newtons from our previous unit, newtons was kilograms meters per second squared. So when you cancel out this one second there, you get newtons, meters per second. Sorry, I meant to say kilogram meters per second. And so you might have noticed that's the same unit as we use for momentum. That's because impulse is closely related to momentum. We're going to talk a little bit more about how that's related next time. And so I just want us to give uh, a quick problem where we practice calculating the impulse for a specific situation. Let's say that we have a baseball catcher that's catching a ball. They're slowing the pitch down uh, with a force of 260 newtons 
And they did it in a period of 20 milliseconds. That's a really short amount of time. All right, so we've got our situation here. We've got our baseball catcher catching the ball. After the ball hits his mitt, he's got to push on the ball. Well, if I line up the same way, he's got to push on the ball to slow it down. So as this ball is flying towards him, he's got to catch it and slow it down by pushing in the opposite direction. So his force is applied to the right of 260 newtons for 20 milliseconds. And if we remember, milliseconds means one thousandth of a second. So 20 thousandth of a second, if we write this in our standard units, it would be 0 0.02 seconds. So to figure out the impulse, or the gym pulse, all we do is throw in that equation. And so we get 260 times 0 0.02, which is 5.2 newton seconds to the right, or 5.2 kilogram meters per second to the right. And again, remember, impulse is a vector, so we got to include that direction, otherwise we're not, we're not really doing it right. If it asks for the magnitude, that would be just the number. But here, 5.2 kilogram meters per second to the right. This is basically our ideas that we're going to talk about this unit. We've got momentum and impulse. We're going to start with those, and I want you to have a really good understanding of these before we move on. Thanks.